the Los Angeles Chargers. A preview for the 2023 Chargers. I this is a it's a relationship that like borders on abusive. <laughs> Because every year, every year we do this. I, I do this especially, where it's a. I, let me do that again. Five, four, three. It's it's another year and, and another round of. Well, they were hurt. You know, you look at all the guys that got hurt last year, and yep. then you look at the talent that they have on the roster, and it just it has to be better. Mike Williams and Keenan Allen played 175 dropbacks together last season. That's it. <laughs> that's that's exactly. <laughs> 175 dropbacks. That's the exact number of snaps Rashawn Gary played. Rashawn Gary, five, four, three. That's the exact number of snaps that Rashawn Slater played. Was 175. Even the guys who played were banged up. Justin mm. Herbert had broken rib cartilage for at least the third of the season. The yeah. right tackle Trey Pipkins was dealing with the knee. Joey Bosa got hurt in week three. When he came yeah. back, he was banged up. I'm tempted to do it again. But there are different kind of competing factors on either side. Why, even if I did it, maybe I don't believe it quite as strongly. Because I don't think the staff deserves a pass, even if they were hurt last year. I think the defense has been missing a certain essence that it should have with a defensive-minded head coach. That There's just something there, and we can get into that. I still have a lot of optimism for this team. The reason that I have optimism about this team is rooted in the quarterback. Yes, that 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 is where it is. And I just think that people forgot how incredible he was in his second season. You look at the numbers. Nate, this guy threw 38 touchdown passes and threw for 5000 yards as a 23 year old second year player. Yep. Yep. He's still that guy. He's going to be healthy this year. So even if there are serious concerns about some of the defensive elements, which there are, even if there are some concerns about their ability to stay healthy at some of these positions, which there are. I still think just him being there with a new offensive coordinator, all of this stuff is reason enough to still be optimistic about what this is going to look like for the Chargers. That's kind of what I got to in my notes, and especially after watching Justin Herbert practice and then rewatching a couple of games and going, holy shit, this guy is good. And just not somehow already people just moved on to the next thing and moved on. Oh, no, there's questions about him. And it's like, there should not be this guy. This guy is just a top, 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 top tier talent. And I, I'm loving, by the way, that you looked up the exact same thing I looked up was how many dropbacks did Justin Herbert have was Keenan Allen and Mike Williams on the field, did the whole thing. And I even looked up the percentage. It was less than a quarter of his dropbacks on the entire season. So last year, just to compare this, T. Higgins and Jamar Chase last year got banged up, you know, both at several mm-hmm. times in the season, sometimes together. Over half of Burrow's dropbacks still on the field, or T. Higgins and Jamar Chase were still on the field. Over half. That was considered, and so that's double the double. Mike Williams and Keenan Allen rate. And I looked at the stats for this. I was like, what? how well did Justin Herbert play, or is this just an anomaly thing? He goes from 17th success rate without Keenan Allen and Mike Williams to third. He goes in 13th in EPA per, to, uh, EPA per dropback to third. He was the 20th best QB against the Blitz last year, which is like, what? He's smart. He gets the ball out. And then he would have been the best. He would have been better than Matthew Stafford was in the Super Bowl winning year with the Rams against the Blitz, which was like a that's really game. interesting because the Blitz numbers were strange last season. And the fact right. that he was so good with those guys on the field, I think says a lot. When we can and, pin a pin a ball on Mike Williams, it really, really, really helps against the Blitz. <laughs> his left tackle is an all pro player. He missed almost the entire season. The guy had broken rib cartilage for weeks and weeks and weeks. He probably shouldn't have even been playing. They finished 17th in EPA per drop back on the yeah. season. 17. Still, okay. It's not like they were a disaster. They no. were they were pretty good. So all these things, and I think the health and the health yeah. of the most important health is the is, biggest thing. Yes. That's number one. But now I think the biggest question about the offense is can Kellen Moore finally take the ceiling off this thing? Yeah. If they're a little bit healthier with a new offensive coordinator coming in, can they finally get those last bits of meat that mm-hmm. are on the bone that we were concerned with? What is the number one thing you are watching with this Kellen Moore led Chargers offense? it's kind of what you kind of what you mentioned there is like how much is he going to push it how much are they going to push the ball push it not just in a sense of like push the envelope or anything but how much is he going to unlock justin herbert's gifts how much is he going to just push him as a player to challenge like he like when herbert gets kind of like pissed off or he's in a two-minute drill all of a sudden he gets into dagger mode and we've seen this the raiders game in week 18 two years ago versus like throw after throw do that all four quarters. Do that for all 40 dropbacks. And I think Kellen Moore can do it. 
I think there's going to be a respect thing there. Kellen Moore is super creative. That's the that's one thing. He's traditional, but his Boise State's still in him, where he gets funky with personnel, some formations. He was doing, you know, remember the seven offensive linemen look with both offensive mm-hmm. linemen in the backfield for the Cowboys. He'll do things like that. And I think that will kind of tickle Justin Herbert's brain a little bit. I, I really do think, and I think that he will get challenged to push the ball. And I, I that's where I, I have to see it. Mike Williams is a great ball winner. He's a vertical guy, but he's not – it's kind of a weird talking about both sides of my mouth where it's not like he's a, a field stretcher in a way. He's an outside boundary guy. It's a weird, I don't know how to say it. Like he's not a speed guy, but he is a vertical guy. <laughs> he's oh, next. I, I have a couple. Uh, that's one of my questions is how yeah. you get more verticality without speed because Quentin Johnson speed. can add the speed to them. I, I think the answer is, <laughs> but it's not a skill set. <laughs> stre- well, it's not, not as a stretcher, but as a slasher, if yes. you're stretching teams horizontally, and just building more space into the defense, that is the biggest question. And that is a conscious effort of this staff. If you go back and watch just the way that they lined up last year, it's a very condensed offense. Mm-hmm. And so they're, they want to just stretch things horizontally just to create more space, period. If you create more space horizontally, can we create more yak opportunities for a guy like Quentin Johnston? And the other thing about pushing the ball down the field, even if you don't have true traditional burners, is protection. Yes. And they could not protect last year. Part of the reason he was getting to all of those checkdowns so quickly was the state of the offensive line. Yep. Some of that was Rayshon Slater, but Matt Filer struggled at left guard last year. We've mentioned their right tackle, Trey Pipkins, was hurt for a huge chunk of the season. Zion Johnson was playing right guard last year for them as a rookie. He had been a left guard his entire career. He's moving back to left guard this season. Spoiler alert, and we'll talk about him later. There are just so many reasons to think that they'll be more secure in their ability to push the ball down the field. And I also have said this before, Justin Herbert, I think, wants to do the right thing. He's just wired that way. It's his, yes. his personality. And they're, I'm sure, showing him hours and hours and hours of Drew Brees tape as they're installing this offense over the last couple of years. And I go, oh, look, look at him get to the right read here. Look at him get to the right read here. I want him to just get that out of his head. Yeah. Just instead of pounding into his brain, this is the right way to play the position mm-hmm. and have him be way too conservative for his skill set. pound into his brain. I want you to take every single shot that you can possibly take during this year. And if you push that narrative to him and you push that version of the offense, I think you could see a different version of the quarterback. And I, maybe I'm talking myself into that and telling myself a story, but I do think that that is going, I, I know for a fact that has been harped on a lot in that building in terms of how they're trying to communicate these ideas to him. It's a real thing. Uh, maybe they should have showed him like, and one mixtape, like instead of, instead of Drew Brees film, you just watch the professor just over and over. <laughs> but these, but uh, no, that's, it's a, it's like his, the verticalness too. And I remember breaking it down because he was getting criticized in the second half of last year. And you were mentioning the offensive line, which is a huge thing. Also Deandre Carter and Gerald Everett and Joshua Palmer are getting target after target after target. And that this is leading to the Mike Williams, Keenan Allen stuff, but the Quentin Johnson addition, even if he's, you know, his ball tracking is not his strength, but he is great with the ball in his hands. He is a true, true plus athlete is he's, I think is going to take some more of those Gerald Everett touches that were the crossers, the digs, just what you're talking about, the yak opportunities, the horizontal stretching. So I think that's that makes a lot of sense. They're bumping up that spot that they kind of just made work with Gerald Everett, who's best, you know, more like a number auxiliary pass catcher as opposed to the guy you should feature in your passing attack. And then also just something like Joshua Palmer as your kind of inside and out dirty work guy. The thing this kind of like shows like the state of the Chargers in 2022. The two guys with more than 100 targets were Austin Eckler and Joshua Palmer. It's like that's not a formula for winning. It's no. just, it's just not. And, and it's going to be much different this year. Way, and way, way more different. We're talking about the passing game. One of the biggest things about this is the the running game was not good last season. Yeah. They struggled to run the ball. They're twenty sixth in early down rushing success rate, despite all of the light boxes and two high coverages that they were getting with Justin Herbert as your quarterback. That has been even more than the shots maybe the biggest priority from this staff Mm -hmm. and one of the biggest priorities from some of the offensive leadership on this team, especially along the offensive line. And Corey Winsley is a guy who has seen good running games. He knows what they look like during his time in green Bay. And I think one of the things that they really wanted to get to the staff is we need to make sure that we're honing this. We need a condensed cohesive run game that fits with our play action game. I don't think they ever found that over the last couple of years. I think there was an idea of it, but it never quite came together. I think they have a better understanding now and a better commitment to this is what we want our run game to look like. This is what's good. 
this is what we have to lean on. And I think that's going to be a huge part of why this offense gets better this season. And and that's one of the best things Kellen Moore has been at is blending stuff together as, as far as the play action looks and stuff out of the same formation. He's really good at that. And I, I think that was a Joe Lombardi negative was that so much was we talked about siloed, but more of like huge tendencies and indicators out of formations. Joe Lombardi. Yes. Has. So it's like this formation, they're going to run this run play this formation. They're going to run these two pass plays. And, that's so totally disconnected. It, there, yep. it was total disconnect between so many yep. of the ideas. That's what, when people ask what makes a good play caller, what makes a good play designer, what makes a good offense, good what art. makes a good offensive coordinator. It's the connection. It's the connective yeah. tissue between all of these different things. And talking to really good ones, and talking to a coach during my trip now, and we we're just discussing, you know, when, all right, we're going to put this run in. And then we're trying to figure out three different play actions that we can do mm-hmm. off of it and the screen that we can do off of it. So every single run they put in, has a play action that now comes off of it. Every single run. This, and this team's a very good offensive team. Every single one. There's there, None of them exist kind of floating on their own ever. Which and I think that's what way to separates these yeah. teams. That's what separates the really good offensive coaches from the ones who are just running a bunch of ball plays that yeah. don't actually have any sort of interconnected element to them. And I think that's what, a huge part of what the Chargers were missing last yeah. year. And I think it's a huge priority for what they can improve this year. A lot of those looks and and we, we Shanahan gets gushed about this a lot, but even like guy like, you know, with the Bengals where they'll go from a formation and the route combinations could be three different ways. You want to make it rock, paper, scissors. And what the chargers have been the last couple of years is rock, 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 rock. And then, yeah, sometimes it works because, you know, you got a great quarterback and talent, but sometimes it's just, you're just, you got your hand tied behind your back. And when you only if you're just throwing the same thing over and over again, they just get used to it. You, that's why I always talk about fastballs and changeups and everything. So I think that's the one addition that I'm like really excited with this offense. That I they're obviously going to have that this year. Yeah, yeah, talking to Corey when I was there, I, I think the idea of we need a we need foundational runs and we need to b- build off the foundational runs. I think that is going to be a huge difference for this team this year. <laughs> Biggest question about the Chargers defense: What do you got for me? Um, there's like some copy and paste from the offense, like kind of health and depth. Like kind of, that's kind of like one, one iteration, but I want to see that second half Brandon Staley of the regular season throughout a whole season uh, that, and I don't know like what, what the Dallas are. And it's not a certain way he was going about it. It was that his stuff became almost spags ish in a very game plan heavy stuff. Yes. Where I'm, I'm playing one team. I'm playing the 49ers. I'm not blitzing at all, but I'm going to do a bunch of stuff after the snap did the same thing against the Jacks. We're not blitzing Trevor Lawrence, but we're going to change up every freaking coverage look afterwards. Same thing with Tua. That was like kind of a more mixed bag, but I want to see that throughout the whole season. This, this kind of Brandon Staley kind of grab bag that he's getting to has really been cool to watch from what we've known with his time with the Rams and early Chargers. So I want to see that through the whole season, what he does with maybe a slightly, slightly different personnel this year than maybe what he's had the last two years. They were really good against the pass over the second half of last season. They're fourth in pass defense DVOA over the second half of the year, but they were still 26th against the run. Over the course of the entire season last year, they were 31st in early down run defense success rate. And this wasn't a, we play light boxes because we're a Fangio defense. Mm -hmm. They used six or fewer guys in the box at an average rate last year. It wasn't in the top five, wasn't up near the top of the league. They average, they allowed 5.5 yards a carry with seven or eight guys in the box last year. That's ridiculous. That's stealing <laughs> for the offense. So this is my concern is that the personnel in the middle of the defense, other than Eric Kendricks, is the same. Same. And they're already hurt. Austin Johnson, who they signed in free agency last year, hasn't been practicing. Otito Ogbonia who also was a rotational defense alignment with them last year. He's on the pup list. He got hurt essentially the same mm-hmm. time Austin Johnson did last year, which led to some of these issues. So theoretically, when you get those guys back, this should be better, but they're already hurt. So now you got Sebastian Joseph day and Morgan Fox again, and a theoretical step forward for Kenneth Murray, who's been dinged up and in previous years, finally healthy coming into training camp. Uh, Daniel Popper wrote a story about how this could be kind of his step forward year mm-hmm. now in year 2020, year four. Mm-hmm. So, all these reasons theoretically for more optimism for the run defense to be better, but I still have concerns. You know, this is not the Browns going out and getting Dalvin Tomlinson. You know, no. it's more similar to what the Packers did where, but the Packers, I know we'll talk about this when we get to green Bay. I think the Packers know this issue. I think they're working very hard to solve it. I don't know what the chargers solution is. Right. I didn't ask anyone there and probably should have, but that's one thing where until I see it, I'm just a little bit worried about how they can hold up physically 
as a run defense when you've seen what they've done over the last few years. And you got to think six of their games are against the Chiefs and their 13 personnel and their run, advanced run game now. The Raiders, who we'll get to, love to pound it. To what They'll use a fullback. Uh, and you got the Broncos. So when we talk about them, Sean Payton's probably going to pound it this year. So that's think about not... the teams they want to play in the playoffs. If yep. you're going to be a contender in the AFC, yeah, who do you have to play against? Bengals, who the are going to pound Ravens. it down your throat. Yep. The Bills are literally re- evolving their offense to, so they can get to this if they have to. It's like, that is... I know it sounds so cliche, but it's so important. You have to be at least average at this. So the offense can't just pick at it. And then it's set, it's so much easier to go, to go this way. Why throw and work? It's the classic two out of three things when you throw the ball are bad. But seriously, let's just run the ball. And let's get five yards a pop. We just do, okay, five yards. And then we get three yards on, on second down. Now it's third and two. That's well, the so whole much argument for all this game planning bullshit that you can do on third down is you have to get to third down. You have to get the you third have to, you have to get pass. there. If, if yeah. you have to get to third and six for any of this stuff yep. to matter, third and seven for any of it to matter. And so it's been so funny. And we'll talk about this with other teams more, but watching coaches around the league get frustrated with this meta of defense. And I'm talking about offensive coaches. Yeah. Yeah. Offensive coaches that have defense that are offensive minded head coaches and looking at their defense and being like, I'm tired of this shit. Like yeah. I need to make a change. We'll talk about some of those teams, especially in the NFC North when we get there. But I do think that we're kind of coming back around where there are coaches around the league and just tired of getting punched in the face over and over it, and it over sucks. again. And so you got to stop getting punched in the face. Yeah. And with this team, I, I want to see it. And so that's my concerns on the front end. On the back end, JC Jackson's working back from injury. He's already missed some time. So we have this idea again on paper. Oh man, if they stay healthy, like this group is really good, but I'm not doing that again with this group. No, I- I'll do it with the quarterback because I, I trust it. Yeah. I'm not doing this again with the defense. Nope. Yeah, I'm I'll be either. happily ha- if you want to be the t- a top ten defense halfway through the season. I'll be wrong, and I yeah. and I will be happy to be wrong. But I'm not doing it with this group again until I see it. I'm just not. Well, that's even when I was looking at the second half of the year. I'm like, oh, oh man, they probably just had this great uptick in stats and everything. I was like, it was all right. Like it wasn't like just an exceptional unit or anything. But I'm kind of glad you. Teams. That's what they did. They jumped on some. They teams. did. They because they, they threw the game plan, their original typical game plan out the window. They just evolved but it's i'm so glad i mean, i feel like this is growth from you because as i was going through this depth chart and i'm looking at everything i was like i try i try to be very positive on these shows like believe it or not <laughs> but i try to be very like hey this is the rosy you know rosy lens that we can look through all these teams and these units and this one it was just it's like yeah okay bosa and khalil mac khalil mac's getting older bosa just can't stay healthy that's kind of his mo now and it was like, okay, but they got some guys in the front in the uh, in the front seven that they added, right? And I was looking, and I'm like, no, they Eric didn't. Kendrick's. Eric Kendrick, and, they, they and then the third round pick. In the second third. round, who's looked good? Who's looked good this preseason? Tuli, so Tuli, it's Pulutu? nice. Yes, yeah. yes. I actually had the two two lead two e pulutu. Yep. And even that is a step in the right direction. They got four edge rushers on the depth chart coming into the season last year instead of only three. Kyle right. Van Noy. They had to play him on the edge because they didn't have anybody else after Kyle Bosa Van got Noy. hurt. So there's a little bit more depth. There's a little bit more reason to think that they're solidified from an injury. Michael Davis played very well last year when Jesse Jackson did get hurt. So now they theoretically have more depth at outside corner, but this is a, I'll believe it when I see it sort of thing with them putting it all together. That's it. That's that. That's perfect. I'm glad. I thought I was going to have to talk you off there. uh, No, but also shout out Dane Brugler because this is his freaking profession and he's really good at it as he gave a shout out to JT Woods uh, on our show on prospects pros. And I was like, I'm going to watch JT Woods, which is a safety for the chargers. Great preseason so far. So shout so out that's Dane. huge. So these huge. are, that's, this stuff is important because yes. if he can come in then and be their third safety, yes, right. That that's allows huge. you to use Derwin James in a way where you can use them in the nickel and be more fun yeah. because here's been the issue is that they have these weak spots that teams just pick at over and over and over again. Asante Samuel Jr., who we all love for the coverage stuff, he had all those picks in the playoff game. He, at the beginning of camp, he was not a starter at nickel. No. Jasir Taylor was starting for them because he's such a liability, Asante is, in the run game. So if you can now use Derwin in some of those places and use three safeties mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. JT Woods in the back end, Now you're able to explore strengths that you couldn't otherwise. So to me, the biggest question is, and this is beyond X factors, whatever, can we get better play from the ancillary pieces that allow the stars to shine rather than just saying, look at all those stars that they have, like we continue to do year after year. So if JT Woods is going to do that, that's encouraging to me, but that's what needs to happen. 
but they need four of those. Yes. <laughs> that, yes. Yeah. That seriously. And no, I'm with you. No, I'm totally with you. I thought I was gonna have to throw cold water on you. So this is not, not, not as difficult of an argument as I thought I was gonna have to make. So, uh, you're right. No, I, I should have just, I should have talked about how good they were going to be. So we would disagree about something. I know. Right. <laughs> Six for once. I know, but this is the thing. I thought I was going to have a whole like different take than you on this stuff. And then you're like, no, the defense sucks. And I was like, no, come on. Uh, it doesn't suck, but <laughs> it I, doesn't I suck. need to see it. it. I, I need to see scrub, it. It starts in scrubs. And then it's just when you go that way, you want ascending pieces. Like yes. that, that, that was what the Chiefs did last year in a different way, but they injected a whole bunch of young guys. Most of them hit, which is, of course, very lucky. And like, they have to count their blessings for that. But this is the thing. You need other guys to step up. You need someone to step up that you weren't expecting to step up or to step up more than you expect them to step up. That's how you become a good unit as opposed to a fine week-to-week unit. X factor for the Chargers. Who do you got? Well, health overall, but I this was when my rant about the defense was going to happen. I was going to say the trenches. And uh, if you can win the Outland Trophy, I'm talking about you for the Chargers. That's, that's offense and defense. How does the offensive line come together? How do you know they do have some moving parts, the guard spots? Can they stay healthy? Of course. Um, how does the defensive front play? Just like we just talked about for the last 10 minutes, and really just the front seven in general. So yeah, just the the trenches on both sides of the ball. There's a bunch of different ways that you can go here. Oh, so many. You know what? So I had Joey Bosa. I'm gonna alter this. It is the highly paid defensive players on the Chargers. Okay. These guys who are getting paid like all pros, Joey Bosa, JC Jackson, Derwin James, mm-hmm, do they mm-hmm. play like all pros? That that's my question. Because yeah. Derwin did not have the season that he wanted to have last year. He came, he yeah. wasn't practicing in camp, had the contract thing, came in late. So now can he really step up and show us this is he's the class of the position in the league, all the different things that he can do, all the ways they can use him. Joey Bosa is making $27 million a year. He is right there at the top of the edge rusher market. He was seventh among all edge players and pressures in 2021, but he played five games last year. Do we get 2021 Joey Bosa or do we get 2022 Joey Bosa? And then the same goes for JC Jackson. Mm -hmm. JC Jackson looked great in camp last year. He had the foot ankle where they had surgery right before the season. He was never quite healthy. And then he had the catastrophic injury. How slow is he to get back? Is he going to be a plus player from the start? Is he going to be somebody that they have to worry about? And then it starts to eat into your corner depth. All this money that they spent on that side of the ball, it needs to go somewhere. It yep. ne- you need to recoup some value. You need to get something out of all of those investments that you made. So Bosa and all those guys, I'm not even just limiting it to him. Yeah. And you can even carry that over to the offense, the receivers. Like they, yeah. that, <laughs> the yep. guys that got the guys that got paid have to play to their contracts. That's just and that's just you have to be on the field to do that. Breakout Sorry. candidate for the Chargers. Um, so I kind of have two, like one and a half here, uh, which is actually. A, a, pun I didn't mean, but uh, Zion Johnson, I kind of went maybe here, but I'm going to go Zion Johnson, moving back to the left side. Uh, So this is where I was about to cut you off at the end of the offensive part. And you're talking about the run game stuff. They're using him as a puller and he looks phenomenal. And that's just expanding the run game. That's, that's another thing. Just this offense. uh, uh, Kellen Moore has had no qualms running a whole bunch of different run concepts, even if, you know, offensive line coaches have a big impact on that, but he'll call everything. So good to use him. Good to use him more of as a power guy different style of runs that they maybe have done in the past. But the other one was Darius Davis, their rookie fourth rounder who returned a kick and or a punt during preseason. He returned five of those in college. He is an awesome returner gadget guy. So I think he's going to take one back this year and like that. And I, he's going to be really impact the return game, which I think is going to be something interesting to watch. So I think he's awesome. I think he's an awesome returner, Like he's going to be a damn good one right away. And someone just to watch the next couple of years. So, just gonna say, Darius Davis. Let him play bit. five snaps a game on offense too. Catch just, just throw him in the, the slot and guy. just let him run. Yes, yeah. that's and the just juice. Having guy right that there. element within their offense, it sounds yeah. like Jalen Guyton's probably not going to make the team after reading Jalen Popper. So they just don't really have that element. Can they no use juice. it a little bit? Can he be our Khalif Raymond every once in a while for this Chargers offense? I had Zion Johnson. You mentioned moving back okay. to the left side. That's his natural position. Had some flashes last year. I don't think he was ever super comfortable, but I think he's going to be a really good guard for them moving forward. I did too. Yeah, I, I'm not. Right. I'm not worried about him. Dan and I talked about this. We're not worried about him, but it's just like he. I think he needed to get his feet wet in the NFL a little bit. What is success for the 2023 Chargers? I mean, at the very minimum, make a playoffs, win a playoff game, and yeah, I I almost went Final Four, but I would I would say win a playoff game has to be the success, especially after how last year ended. They have to win a playoff game. Have if they to. don't win a playoff game, there I think there will be changes. Yeah, that sounds right. They've shown a That's lot of urgency in, in the resources that they've spent yep. in how they've constructed this team. 
There's been a lot of concessions to the staff about what they wanted. It has to happen. Nope. It has to happen. There's no no more of the, oh, well, we were hurt. You know, it, it didn't get the breaks that we wanted. That can't happen again. And I don't think it's going to. I think if they stay healthy, they're going to be good, but they better be. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's the state that we're in right now.